I was in a sales uh, meeting with a very important client years ago. And uh, during the course of the presentation and the dialogue around our product and competitive products, uh, the customer said something about our competitor that wasn't true, but it was really harmful to the competitor. And I didn't say anything. I finished the, the presentation and the interview, and it looked like we had a good chance to get the business. And I walked out of the, uh, out of the offices and sat in my car, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me immediately and said, Buck, you're taking advantage of an untruth. And I knew it was wrong. I knew I should have said, that's not true. Our product is really good, but uh, that isn't true. And uh, but I said, well, what do I do about it? And I felt that the Spirit said, go back and tell him. Well, this is a busy engineer in a big company. I didn't think there was any chance I could go back and say, by the way, could I see Mr. So-and-so again? But I did. And the, the receptionist called up to the offices, and sure enough, yeah, well, come on up. So I go up and I sit down across the desk from this engineer who's really, he'll be the decision maker, whether we get a trial and possibly get the business from this very significant customer. And he said, what's, what's up? And I said, well, I have to tell you what you said about uh, that competitor's product, that really wasn't accurate. And really they didn't do that and that didn't happen. Uh, and I just felt badly about letting it go. You know, we're a Christian business. We're trying to do things in a way that would honor God. And one of the fundamental things we got to do is tell the truth. So I want you to know the truth. If that means we don't get the business, that's okay, but I'll have a clear conscience. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? He said, I realized that after you left. And he said, I was really disturbed that you didn't correct it. And he said, I'm really glad you came back. And the backstory is we did get that business. Not only did we get the business, but at a really critical time in our corporate growth, uh, but we kept the business until God redirected us into another business. And here's another story, another backstory. I witnessed to that man for several years as we did business with him, and he never did accept Christ. But his 15-year-old son attempted suicide, uh, and I found out about that, and I called him and I said, Ted, I've heard about, his, they call him three, his, he was the, the, the third, and I said, I heard about Trip, and I said, I really feel terrible. I'd love to write him a letter. Would it be all right with you? And he said, oh, absolutely. I said, but you know what I'm going to tell him about, don't you? And he said, yeah, you're going to tell him about Jesus, but go ahead. So I wrote the boy a letter, and I told him about trouble that I'd had in my own life and how I despaired of ever finding any answer in life, but how in finding Christ it had turned my life around. And uh, I just urged him to do the same, and he did. And uh, his life turned around. He got out of the, the, he was in a mental institution when I sent him the letter. He got out of there, grew on, went on to college, got married, and had his own family. And there's a backstory to that, too. His father had never received Christ. Fifteen years later, I've, we've sold the business, uh, moved on, living in Florida, and out of the blue, clear blue sky, I get a phone call from Ted. And he said, I'm down here visiting my daughter, and uh, I was wondering if maybe you and Bonnie could, you know, get together and have a meal with us. And I said, sure. In fact, you know, do you realize Bob Mack now lives two, down, two doors down the street from me? I'll invite he and Holly to come too because we'd all been, we'd grown close through the business association over the years and had visited one another's homes and he'd played in our PTL golf outings and so forth. And uh, so he said, that'd be great. So he and his wife came and uh, had dinner with Bonnie and I and Bob and Holly. And after dinner, and we sat over on the couch, and I said, well, Ted, I said, how are you doing with Jesus now? And he said, talk to him every morning with a big smile on his face. And he had come all the way to, to Florida and wanted to see me to let me know that he had become my brother in Christ.